Hello everyone and welcome to the GNU Lectures channel. This is the first episode of my series on getting started with Linux. In this video I'm going to discuss what Linux is, why people use it, and answer some questions. Since a lot of people have heard of Linux, but not many people know what it's all about. With that said let's get started. To common misconception, Linux itself isn't one operating system, rather it's a collection of different operating systems that use the same base, but with some unique qualities. You can think of distributions kind of like baking a cake. Sure this is a vanilla cake, and this is a red velvet cake, and yes they taste different, but they still use the same basic ingredients. There are many Linux distros to choose from, and I'm going into the details of distros in my next video but they all suit different people depending on the user's needs and wants. A large amount of this is to do with desktop environments which is essentially the GUI interface along with some applications and utilities, which is why some distros can seem similar. Despite this, note that distros aren't as important as some people make them out to be, and you might hear people say they are not important at all. Unless you have very specific requirements, you should be okay with whatever distro is already installed on your computer. So if Windows and Mac OS have the software we are familiar with, why would anybody use Linux? Well there are a few reasons why. Linux is highly focused around open source software which means the source code of a program is visible to the public eye, which might seem scary to those not familiar with open source software as people might try and look for vulnerabilities, but for every one person trying to cause problems, you have thousands of people trying to solve problems and make the software even better. If you don't want your system updated randomly, the update won't be forced on you. If you want your desktop, to look like Windows or Mac OS, sure, go ahead. Linux also has support for Core Boot and Libera Boot which allow you to remove the Intel management engine and replace your manufacturer's BIOS with a completely free one that's a lot quicker, although this is mostly reserved for older hardware. While you can technically use Windows 10 for free by simply not activating, that comes at the cost of some limited customization and you will still have to deal with have to deal with have to deal with forced updates and telemetry even if you activate as for mac os you can't always guarantee success with running mac os on an on apple computer due to the ability to massively strip programs down lack of data collection and optimization you can run linux on very old hardware with good performance distros such as lubuntu artix Tiny Core and Crunch Bang Plus Plus use very few system resources with some distros almost being as lightweight as Windows XP. But even the more resource intensive distros such as Ubuntu can be lighter than Windows 10 or Mac OS. So if you have an old laptop or desktop that's really bad at running Windows 10, slapping a lightweight distro on the hard drive can give the computer a new life, assuming the computer actually works of course. Even if you are perfectly content using Windows or Mac OS, there are still some things you can learn from using Linux. If you want to get an IT related job, whether that is being a network engineer, sysadmin, ethical hacker, or programmer, learning how to use Linux and getting familiar with Linux and other Unix like systems such as FreeBSD is a good idea, even Microsoft uses Linux to run Azure. On Windows, most of the software you download is in the form of an executable file from a website. Depending on the source you could end up with something you don't want on your computer. Most of the time it's just an annoying bloated program that tries to waste your time and resources. But other times it could also be something much more serious like a keylogger or ransomware. Now while you can get malware on Linux, it is a lot rarer and most people don't even bother using antivirus or anti-malware software. Now for some frequently asked questions by people not familiar with Linux. While Windows is still the top dog for PC gaming, Linux gaming is better than you may think. A lot of Steam games like Civilization 6, Cities Skylines, Hearts of Iron 4, Ark, all Valve games, and a large amount of indie games are supported natively. But Valve's Proton allows many Windows-only Steam games to run on Linux. For games that aren't on Steam, you can use a tool called Lutris. 
Linux also has support for most emulators like Dolphin, along with front-ends like RetroArch. The main limitations are things like anti-cheat software. TLDR, it depends on the games you like to play. Linux has quite a lot of options for a GUI interface. Most distros come with a desktop environment by default. Fedora and Pop! OS use GNOME, Zubuntu uses XFCE, KDE Neon uses KDE Plasma, and Elementary OS uses Pantheon. But some distros have versions with different desktop environments. I'm going into the details of programs in another video, but a lot of programs you can find on Windows are available on Linux. Some people suggest running Windows programs through Wine, if there isn't a Linux version. But I think it's bad practice, because while wine is good, you can't guarantee success, so I'd use it as a last resort, if you try and use Linux native applications like Kden Live, Critter, Gimp, LibreOffice, OBS, and Audacity, then it will work out better in the long term. It's not necessarily hard, you just do things differently to how you would in Windows or Mac OS. On Windows you download most of your software through a web browser, but on Linux that is rare. I mean you download images, videos, and other media through a browser, but for actual programs you download and install using a package manager, this can be done in a terminal. But most distros have a graphical manager to make it easier for beginners. Now I'm not trying to say Linux is perfect, because it isn't. And I don't hate Windows, there are things I like about Windows, I simply think Linux is a great alternative, and I'm very excited about its development. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.